Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week, the second batch of the Sputnik V vaccine from Russia arrived on Monday at the Chedi Jagan International Airport. Minister of Health, Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony, says this will be used to ramp up the country's COVID-19 vaccination campaign. We are very happy that we are able to get an additional 30,000 vaccines. We'll continue rolling out this week. Uh, with these additional vaccines, we intend to ramp up how we are um, to get more people immunized. The health minister says the response to the vaccination campaign has been positive. Minister of Natural Resources Honorable Vikram Bharat expects a significant increase in Guyana's oil revenues in the years to come. The minister was speaking on the sidelines of the Youth in Natural Resources opening ceremony held recently at the Arthur Chung Conference Center. He noted that Elisa Destiny will be the smallest floating production storage and offloading vessel, producing 120,000 barrels of oil per day, BPD. We would have gotten 200, a little over $200 million on that one FPSO alone. So it means the larger one, 220 capacity, we should be getting $400 million proceeds um, from one, one of the larger FPSO. The Lisa Unity and Prosperity FPSOs are both designed to safely produce 220,000 BPD and are expected to come on stream in 2022 and 2024 respectively. Minister Barrett explained that by 2025, government is looking to make over U.S. $1 billion per year from the sale of Guyana's produced crude of about 560,000 BPD. The government expects that figure to increase even more in the following years. Farmers and other stakeholders in the East Burbies quarantine region will benefit from the upgrade of a mud dam to an all-weather access road. This will lead to new opportunities in the agri-sector, as untapped lands will be available for use. This is part of a $1.65 billion package that the administration has budgeted to execute roadworks in the region. Minister of Public Works Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel led a team of engineers, regional officials and farmers to inspect the alignment for the road last weekend. The $1 billion thoroughfare may extend from either number 52 or number 58 towards the Kanji Creek. The intent is that we want to open a road that will eventually give us access to new lands, for the expansion of agriculture, cattle farming, and any other land use that will catapult Ghana's development. Another major roadway will be built between Molson Creek and El Dorado. The administration is pursuing this project to increase access to the quarries in Oriala. Minister Edgel also inspected the alignment for this mud road that will be transformed through a $100 million budgetary provision. You'll be able to exploit and adequately access a lot of the resources that are in Oriala for development, more particularly stone aggregate. The Guyana Livestock Development Authority GLDA Veterinary Services Laboratory has received its official certification from the Guyana National Bureau of Standards, GNBS. Agriculture Minister Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa and Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce Honorable Onij Walrun attended the ceremony on Tuesday. When our country is seeing rapid development that is taking place and that will come our way, this will be a very, very important agency that will help us to push the development trust forward. Even as we, we certify this laboratory, um, it also, even though the agriculture is not my uh, sector in which I am um, responsible for, that we together want to work to improve uh, services and the lives of Guyanese. Later Tuesday, Minister Mustafa toured the Bounty Farm Limited operations at Tamari. Thereafter, he was briefed on the plans by six local companies to undertake a massive project that could see Guyana on the path to becoming self-sufficient in corn and soybean over the next few years. We are looking to grow our own corn and soya, and Bounty Farm will be an important contributor to that. Minister Mustafa also visited a dilapidated Cocorat Alliance Road to Mary, where he announced that remedial works would begin immediately. Residents were underwater 
And if you could see the sluice, the sluice is in a very terrible state. I'm very appalled at this structure here. NDI is now mobilizing from this afternoon to rectify this problem. I have asked the CDC to help us monitor it. Meanwhile, Minister Mustafa examined the operations at a weather watch station. 15 pesticide storage cabinets valued $700,000 from the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board were handed over to the National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute. On Tuesday, Minister of Public Works, Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel announced that some $18 million has been set aside to aid developmental works in Wiki Kalkuni, Region 10. The minister, along with Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Honorable Nigel Darmlal, visited the Riverine community as part of a wider two-day outreach to the region. He said these works fulfill promises made to residents during an earlier outreach. It includes $5 million for repairs to the community's school and $30 million for the repair and extension of the health centre. The extension would allow for enhanced health services in keeping with the government's vision of improved health care nationwide. As a government... Out of the resources that we have, you're getting 80 million. Then you get another 10 million, which I personally hand over to the um, to show for your COVID-19 relief fund. Aside from this, Minister Darmlal said a $45 million nursery school would soon be established to serve residents in Ururu and surrounding communities as the population grows. Minister of Natural Resources Honorable Vikram Bard says government plans to establish an oil and gas training institute. The minister noted that the aim is to build local capacity to meet the growing demands in the sector. It will have to fit into our local content policy because if we are going to argue that we need 50% of the workforce to be Guyanese, then we don't want the 50% to be cleaners and laborers and maids and cooks. We want our people to be managers, to be the technical people, to be the petroleum engineers. The government is currently in discussions with international partners to help set up the Oil and Gas Training Institute. Prime Minister Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips has lauded the efforts of the Private Sector Commission for responding quickly to the needs of those persons affected by the volcanic eruption in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Prime Minister Tuesday afternoon visited the Munishwar's Limited Wharf in Georgetown, where CDC officers and other workers were packing the approximately 300 tons of emergency supplies to send to that country. PM Phillips said he was happy that Guyana, through the CDC, in collaboration with the PSC, could offer assistance to a sister state in need. A commendable effort of collaboration between the government of Guyana and the private sector of Guyana. And when I say the private sector of Guyana, the private sector commission, the George Young Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Guyana Manufacturing Services Association, and all the uh, organizations throughout the country, in every region, They've contributed to this effort, and we're at a stage where we almost finished loading the boat. The vessel, Miss Mina, set sail Tuesday evening for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A welcome to Guyana monument was on Tuesday unveiled at a Tamari roundabout by First Lady Mrs. Arya Ali. In her remarks, the First Lady said she initiated a national beautification project in keeping with the changing economic landscape and the growing interest of both investors and tourists in Guyana. This project relies on scenic conservation and revitalization, which can both motivate and accelerate community renewal and reinvestment as part of a larger economic development or master plan. The area surrounding the 20-foot illuminating monument has been landscaped, while 100 hanging flower baskets are installed on the lamp posts leading to the roundabout. The project totals more than $25 million. The sign was designed, built and installed by Impressions Branding with the Chedi Jagan International Airport, also investing a considerable amount of resources. Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Honorable Diodat Indar, says he is pleased with the more than $3.2 billion waterfront development project ongoing at the Guyana Shore Base Incorporated, Gisby, Houston. During a side visit on Wednesday, Minister Indar explained that the work at Gisby is a testament of the government's intervention since taking office last August. When we came in, I just want to remind the country that there were a, what you call a moratorium on waterfront development. All permits were held in abeyance for over two years. 
there was an excess of over 50 million US dollars in investment in the infrastructure of the country was held up because no one received permits to do their work. The minister says about 16 permits were approved during that process. The wharf under construction is referred to as Berts 3 and 4 and cater for wider operations, especially the handling of heavy lifts, allowing more vessels to be docked at the same time. Minister of Education Honorable Priya Manikchan has commissioned the country's eighth smart classroom at President's College. Minister Manikchan on Thursday said the initiative will make a huge difference in education delivery. We're not going to leave it up to schools to roll this out how they want to. We're building out a whole ICT smart room usage across the education sector and how it is these smart classrooms could reinforce, enhance, and reach people who don't yet have them how it could reach the students who need that reinforcement. The commissioning of this smart classroom is one of 20 the Education Ministry plans to establish across the country. President's College is the first dorm school to receive the facility. Minister of Health Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony says Guyana's vaccination campaign against COVID-19 has put the country in a good position ahead of its SCARICOM counterparts. He was speaking during Thursday's COVID-19 update. Dr. Anthony noted that the government's efforts to provide vaccines for its people had pushed the nation forward. We have been able to acquire more vaccines um, than just depending on the COVAX facility. And that's why we have been able to advance our uh, immunization program. Residents of Kokwani Region 9 will benefit from a second round of upgrades to their internal roads. This was disclosed by Minister of Public Works, Honorable Bishop Juan Egil, during a meeting with the Kokwani Neighborhood Democratic Council, NDC. I'm pleased to tell you this morning that out of $200 million that have been allocated for hinterland roads throughout Region 10, we will spend about $25 million dollars to fix the internal roads here in Kokwani. Minister Edgel noted that a $12.1 million contract had been financed under the 2020 budget to rehabilitate the community's roads. He urged the NDC to prioritize the rehabilitation of its roadways. It means that you should be generating more revenue. And if the trucks are passing through here and you are collecting the revenue for the crossing, I would expect that a portion of that revenue will also go to the maintenance of roads. You can be collecting the monies from the trucks and the monies are not put back into the maintenance of the roads that the trucks themselves will be damaging. The Ministry of Public Service has launched its first Occupational Safety and Health Committee which will provide an enabling work environment in keeping with OSH legislation. The 8th Member Committee was officially introduced on Friday at the launching of the Ministry's OSH Month. Minister Honorable Sonia Parag said a new committee will meet the needs of the evolving public sector. We always associate it with construction, we always associate it with industrial uh, actions. And, um, and now that we have a public service or around the world, and in Guyana that is evolving, we obviously need to have an agenda that is in keeping, suitable, and evolving with the public sector. So we are applying occupational safety and health in all, or across the board, in all ministries and agencies in the public sector. The minister says occupational safety and health will be applied in all ministries across the public sector. Meanwhile, she noted that in the face of COVID-19, public sector employees must keep themselves safe. I do therefore implore every public servant to create and sustain a safe and healthy work environment as we continue to live in this pandemic and beyond. Minister of Health Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony says to date, 600 persons have been fully immunized against COVID. During Friday's COVID-19 update, Minister Anthony said persons are considered fully immunized seven days after receiving their second dose. We have uh, close to 600 or so persons who would have taken the Sinopharm vaccine that can be considered to be fully uh, vaccinated, meaning they have received their, both doses. 
Minister Anthony noted that the number of persons fully immunized will increase in a month as more persons get their second shot. Meanwhile, Minister Anthony says the age to receive COVID-19 vaccines has been lowered to 18 years and above to ensure Guyana achieves herd immunity. The vaccination of persons 18 years and older started on Friday. Minister Anthony said they were receiving numerous calls to lower the age for younger persons to access the vaccines and now is the appropriate time to do so. All the vaccines that we currently have in Guyana are being used uh, in the adult population. And if we are really and truly going to achieve herd immunity, it means that we have to get most of our adult population being immunized. And um, in an effort to do so, that's why we have lowered age. He added that infection in young adults has always been high, but most have been asymptomatic and did not require hospitalization. Dr. Anthony is urging persons from the age of 18 to ensure they become inoculated to protect themselves from contracting the severe form of COVID-19 that can lead to death. Farmers of Maikoni and surrounding communities can expect timely solutions to their problems. The assurance was given by Agriculture Minister Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa, who hosted a consultation exercise on Friday. The minister, along with agriculture agency heads, visited the Region 5 community, where several farmers highlighted their concerns. Minister Mustafa instructed the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority to dispatch two additional machines to the village to accelerate drainage works, following requests by residents. I've since instructed NDIA, MMA and GRDB to do a survey this weekend. Monday I should have a report from GRDB extension officer to assess the damages that were done here and see how, what help we can offer to the farmers. The minister says emergency works are priority. By next week, hopefully, I can able to make a, 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 a concrete decision to know what are some of the works we will assist them with. But as it stands now, we'll start to do the emergency work with the dams, do the um, empoldering of some of the rice field, and also clear some of the canals. Advisor to the Minister of Health, Dr. Leslie Ram Sami, received a donation of medical supplies and personal protective equipment from Food for the Poor Incorporated to aid Guyana's COVID fight. Dr. Ram Sami says these items are in high demand, especially for use by healthcare workers. In the last year, we have used more PPE than we normally use in a year. We have used close to 10 years of that. This is the intense need for PPE. And this is the reason why globally there is a shortage of PPE because Guyana is not unique in the fact that our demand for PPE has increased 10 times. Dr. Ram Sami took the opportunity to urge those present at the organization's festival city compound to encourage their peers to get vaccinated and to resist misinformation. The vaccines are safe. The vaccines do not have any chip to spy on you. Because all our politicians, all from both sides, have taken the vaccine. And 900 million people around the world have taken it. And none, we have not documented none. So don't listen to foolishness. It's absurd. Please come out and take your vaccine. Minister within the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for public affairs, Honorable Kwame McCoy has promised government's continued support to the development of Oriala and Siparuta. Minister McCoy was accompanied by a minister within the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development, Honorable Anand Pasad, during an outreach to the Region 6 communities on Friday. Minister McCoy assured residents of both communities that the prevailing pandemic will not restrict the government from helping the people. The two ministers distributed almost 400 hampers to residents of Oriala and Siparuta. We are not a fair weather government. We are not with you only when there are good times. We are with you even in the bad times, even in the difficult times, because we believe truly and dearly and earth honestly believe that we have a role and a responsibility to the people of Guyana and we don't treat it lightly. He also urged residents to continue to stand resolute in the defense of democracy. All of us must stand up against any attempt to assault our democracy and we must make sure that we say to anyone who believes that our democracy is something that we could play with and we could 
um, create the type of problems we experience post-March 2nd elections never again. Minister Prasad said there is enough evidence to show that the previous government did nothing for the two riverine villages. It was only in late January that we gave this community, the village of Oriala, $10 million, a presidential COVID cash grant. And the Honorable Minister alluded to earlier that the Treasury was empty. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye. <music>